and look what happens. This isn't just ours. This is everybody's. Yeah. This is everybody's. This is what you need, Ted DiBiase. You need a little bit of family. That's what we are. When we get together, we get people's taking it together. This is not the million dollar belt. This is the Hulkamaniac belt. This is not purchased. These belts, this Hulkamaniac team can't be bought. You gotta fight, kick, and grind for it. And Hulk Hogan, <laughs> we are gonna fight, kick, and grind for you all the way. You know something, multi-million dollar man? Now that we're winding down to the Survivor Series, now that it's not that far off, I really like the fact that you're being backed into a corner by your own team. These guys aren't a bunch of has-beens like you tried to drill into the powers of pain's mind. These are the best in the world, brother. These are the best at what they do. These are the WWF Tag Team Champions. Number one, I'm glad you had to cut an extra check to the powers of pain. And as far as Jake the Snake's DDT stretcher service, arenas all around the country, multi-million dollar man, his opponents are getting that long, slow ride in that rolling coffin. As the ambulance wheels out of the arenas, as the red lights come on, I can't help but think you're going to be the next victim of the DDT. Zeus, you're mine. Jake the Snake, how are you going to get him in the, the bottom DDT? line is this, my man. A man is dying of thirst, has to have water. A dog is starving, has to have food. A child that's crying has got to have some attention. I have got to have you, Ted DiBiase. You know, we all have our needs. We all have our wants. But one thing I know, multi-million dollar man, winding down into this thing, you're going to be on the phone. You're going to try to get a hold of Jake the Snake. You're going to try to get a hold of Demolition. Nobody here sells out. We live by the demandments. We have. Skills and vocabulary too. I've been hitting the this edition is all brand new. You're through. I'm in the planetary and like Doctor Who. Who, who. So who? Fuck your beef. No relief. I step on stage. Girls scream like I'm Keith. What's up, everybody? Ringtime Pro Wrestling is back at it again. Keith and Keisha are in the building. Keisha, after over a month, say hi to the people. Hey. Um. Hey. Like that's about yeah. I think I'm gonna do it like that. Hey everyone, how are y'all? Um, hope everybody is having an enjoyable night tonight. You know, I hope everybody has had a good day today. You know that kind of thing. You know that's how we do it right here. So yeah. Um, apparently, we still know how to do this. Um, yo. Your waves are not deceiving you. We are live right. again on Spreaker. Um, we have not done this in a month. Um, me and Keisha have been through a lot personally. Um, mm -hmm. So we have we been on hiatus. Um, it was not a planned hiatus. Um, we did not know when we were coming back. Um, we had a very, very personal, heartbreaking loss uh, about three weeks ago. Our mother passed away, and um, prior to that, uh, we were dealing with her cancer treatments, and that's what kept us away. That's probably why the show was inconsistent over the past couple of months. Uh, we, as a family, just been going through a lot uh keeping it all together um, but we couldn't just sit on the sidelines because that's not what our mother would want uh, We, I mean a lot of people probably don't know this because it's not something we've publicized or made uh, we didn't make any announcements um, if you follow us on social media um Probably on Facebook Other than that Because I, I didn't mention it on Twitter I didn't mention it on Instagram Or anywhere like that um, Keisha I don't think he even mentioned it either um, No Not on I did on Facebook But um, 
not anywhere else. Well, no, I did on Instagram too. So if you follow me on Instagram or Facebook, you would have seen it. But anywhere else, it wasn't, it wasn't mentioned. I didn't mention it. Yeah, um, I di- I didn't know how we were going to approach that subject today either. Yeah, but nah. I felt like it it warranted some sort of explanation. Um, and just an idea of just, I mean, this show is our outlet. This show is um, important to us because it is where we get to come and release. Um, fans of the show for a long time noticed that, hey, man, we go off kilter all the time. We talk about a lot right. of stuff that has nothing to do with wrestling just because we, um, like I said, this is where we come and kick it. Um Right. Exactly. Um, sometimes this is where me and Keisha catch up because we hadn't talked for a couple of days. <laughs> but um, right. yeah, but uh, I just felt like we had to put like a little bit of a state of the union to this, and uh, just a little bit to let kind of just let you know where we're coming from, and uh, I guess to explain also maybe the tone of how this show may sound over the next coming weeks, just because of how. Uh, it's, it's an ongoing process uh, I don't know how you do this um, We don't know how you do this And we're just all figuring it out Right Right. Um, so with that being said um, We have some plans For Ringtown Pro Wrestling um, Huge plans In the future That's right um, To the fact of we may be on regular radio in the near future. Um, there's some details that has to be worked out, and um, it, it'll be for about an hour, only like once a week. Um, it'll be here in the local Atlanta market, but those shows would be able to be streamed online uh, live when we do them. Um, <laughs> Wait, that now come on now, Keith, sir. It really? So you just you just gonna just throw it at me like that? Okay, I'll I mean, y'all no. something, people. <laughs> like, that it's, was, it's, it's, really? it's, it's a work in progress. Um, but it's something that I feel like it's the next evolution of the show. Um, so and. If this thing works, we might try to expand it. Uh, like I said, it's just it's something. It's just an experiment. It's nothing huge, but uh, like I said, I feel like it's the next evolution of the show. Also, it's to fire some shots, Keish. I feel disrespected. Let me tell you why. Ninety two nine the game, local sports show in the Atlanta area, the radio station in the Atlanta area. Um. Wonderful station Does a good job Puts on some good shows Do you know Wednesday night They got a wrestling show What? Wait I didn't yeah. know that Yes uh, Now Here's the thing Full disclosure Tony Schiavone Will be hosting the show With some guy never heard of. With some guy Never heard of I have a big call I haven't been summoned. They know who I am. They're so disrespectful. Uh, Keisha, I'm not trying to say this as I'm bragging, or I'm not saying this as I am uh, being boastful, but I am the premier wrestling journalist in this city. I'm just saying. They didn't know? I am the Dave Meltzer. Of this town, I am the Bill Aptor of this place. I am the Wade Keller of this place. Don't get me wrong. I think Tony Schiavone is a great get. Uh, he has years and years of great experience to grow off of. He was there in the trenches at WCW through all, all the transitions. He could tell a lot of wonderful stories, but he needs. A pure historian. That's right. Who he can bounce this stuff off of? Now this guy 
that they got probably is good. Probably a hell of a wrestler fan. But he ain't nothing compared to you. Come on, Keith. That's all I'm saying. Give it the program. He That's ain't nothing saying. compared to you. And you know how I know? Because, look, I don't know what his real guy but I got over 200 hours of audio content that says I know what I'm doing in this business. So, I said, okay. Uh, I found a way for me to uh, hit these airwaves in Atlanta. And I'm going to utilize it. And... Uh, well, let's just follow what they may. Uh, 680 The Fan. I'm just telling y'all, since y'all need some content. Right. We can start Wednesday Night Wars. I don't know if y'all thought <laughs> right. about this. I really do not know if y'all thought about this. Because I just thought about it as I'm sitting here. We can start the Wednesday Night Wars. Tony Shavai is a WCW guy. Hey, Amen. I, I will rep the WWF. We can start the Wednesday Night Wars. Black Vince is here for you. <laughs> Black Vince. I, I I I humbly accept my my name. Yeah, I still got to change that in my phone. And uh, I'm going. I'm gonna do that. And the ringtone. I got to get the ringtone to that. I am going to. I'm just saying. They, they better get on it. But yeah, so that that's 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 just some stuff that's going down the pike. Um we we we're gonna be here uh working hard doing this. But uh on a lighter note, Keish, we have not been doing yes, this sir. for a month. Uh, did we give everybody permission to lose their ever loving mind while we was gone? Never, we never did. Like that, that issue was never put out. I don't know who to, who told them that it was okay, but we never said that. Like we never said that. Yeah. I don't know what's going on, man. Also, uh, y'all shows that was eaten while we was gone. Just understand that the rating system and rankings are going to change. <laughs> That's so, right. Uh. All you shows on Spreaker, who that rose up, and I gotta see our, our symbol fall down a few notches. It's coming back up. Right, Just exactly. Still, it's coming back. But like I said, neither here nor there. Right now, let's talk about some wrestling. So let's can, talk about it. Let's go to TLC and yeah, let's get the back. Oh Lord! Tables, mm. ladders, and chairs. Yeah. Interesting pay per view now. Here's what I will say. Uh, and we've had some thoughts about what we thought was going to happen. Uh, shout out to the Rasselcast who had both me and Keisha on for their third yeah. anniversary episode last Thursday. It was uh, wonderful to be a part of such an event with a group of such illustrious podcasters. Uh, it was old school, new school. Uh, it was good to get the juices back flowing. It was good to be back behind the mic. Uh, you, you, as I said on the show, it's always good to show up and just be talent. Because this production right. side of this thing is hard sometimes. I, I, I didn't remember where all the buttons was this week. <laughs> it's cool, kid. It's I understandable, man. I didn't remember where all you the know? buttons was. But, right. Don't you know? Getting back in the swing of things, you know, it's, it's fine. You know what I'm saying? they good. People can't. There's some people out there that can't do what you do. You know, like me, because I'm telling you, I'd be lost if it was me. I'd be like, oh god, oh god, this ain't gonna happen. We're not doing this today, because but, tell uh, me. yeah, we're here. Uh, and so let's give some little backdrop. So apparently, let's get while we were going. Uh, Keish. They get sick in the WWE locker rooms. Hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't know if they not spraying stuff down at the end of the show. 
I don't know if uh, somebody got the cooties or whatever, but uh, folks sick. Uh, viral infections going around. Do you know they tested cats for the mumps right now? Ooh. The mumps? Ooh. I'm just saying. Ooh. Like, that apparently, they're, they're, serious. apparently they're confused around here. Like, they don't know what's going on. Uh, they thought it was like meningitis. Uh, they're, they're very confused. But it, it totally altered TLC. So Roman Reigns could not make the pay-per-view. Bray Wyatt could make the pay-per-view. Apparently, Bo Dallas been out for a while. Uh, they didn't see JoJo at uh, which a hey, if Bray got it, I understand how JoJo got it, but that's a whole other discussion, right? Mm-hmm. It sure is. Or is it? I mean, like it's. I mean, you know. I, okay, we're not going to go TMZ. We're not going to get messy this week. We will save the messy for later on. But so. Things are going crazy all over the place. Uh, hey, Devil quit. Uh, Nia Jax is uh, on a leave of absence. Like it's it's so the whole thing is bonkers, right? So WWE put together pay per view what they had, and they uh-huh. announced the in ring return of Kurt Angle. Keish. Kurt Angle who has not wrestled in WWE in 11 years. And, and Keish, hasn't really wrestled at all in about two. And one of the big things that they said they had to put him in the ring right away was because, you know, they want those injuries to heal. So his first match back is going to be TLC, right? Uh, Which was... Not a traditional t- tables, ass, and chairs match. No, I, I'll no. explain to you why that it was it was altered. But I'll tell you one thing I did like about the pay per view quiche. They did save tables, ladders, and chairs for the final match. That was it. They did not have a stupid chairs match this year. Oh God! Ew. They did not have an arbitrary tables match. Uh, you know, just to kind of throw something in there. They did not have a ladder match, which, don't get me wrong, I love ladder matches. I really do. But I think it takes some of the juice out of the TLC match if you've already saw ladders, especially with good workers who know how to work fucking ladders. Right. Right? right. Which, also, uh, okay, so let's get out of that, right? So, Overall, I like this show for what it was. Now, how do I rate it? I feel like this show will exist in the WWE bubble as just like a standalone show. Like, the impacts from the show really don't have any long-term effects. I mean, the show was a setup to get us to Survivor Series anyway, right? That's correct. Because that's, I mean, that's, that's, that's the big money. Uh, Raw and SmackDown will come together. We'll explain some of that because there is a match there that I still don't get. Well, I instead I don't get it. I get it, but it's like y'all ain't gonna make me believe in that shit. Um, and for all my potential customers, that if I do come to radio, I can't stop cussing. Believe it or not, I can do this for sixty minutes without cussing. But while I'm on podcast time, man, I can't believe that shit. Uh, so let's open up the show. But all up, mm-hmm. one of the more diverse cards they've ever had, right? It really uh, is. Now, with that being said, uh, Keish, I do not ever want to see this young lady in a pre show ever again. But Sasha Banks or uh, Russell Alicia Fox and defeated her in the pre show. Uh, who the hell? What the hell? Right. Uh, are, have we bumped our heads? That we got Miss Banks mm-hmm. in the pre-show. She ain't no pre-show like side job. What the hell are we doing? Uh, also, Alicia Fox. At the time we was gone, 
has merch. Do you know this is her first merch at being with the company in 10 years? Wow. Has a shirt. Crazy like a fox. Uh, official WWE shop. Uh, That's crazy, right? Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Who do? Right? Like, the funny thing is, I don't know if it's crazy that she had had a shirt since she's been there, or the fact that, uh, hey, man, I didn't realize she didn't have a shirt. I just assumed she had a shirt. Like, what was I thinking? But yeah, apparently uh Alicia did not have a shirt. Mm. Mm. Uh, mm. But yeah, so that that went down. Uh Oscar mm. made her raw debut. Now also, this show had three women's matches and like two cruiserweight matches. Once again, diversification of the card. I give y'all a thumbs up for that. Uh, Oscar defeated Emma in a predictable match that we knew she'd win. Uh, but I will say this, Keish. Not bad. Mm. Not bad. Not even a little bit. I, I, I'm very remiss to give a lot of credit to Emma. But uh, she showed up. And look like a capable wrestler. I said, "Okay." Like I, I literally was like, "All right, I, I, I believe in this." But uh, <laughs> Oscar is on her way. Um, I'm interested to see how they they take her to the title because I don't think it's going to be immediate because we're go- we're trying to go to Survivor Series. So, um, her being a big acquisition that she was to Raw, um, will she showcase her at Survivor Series and then put her on a route to a title? Uh, how does Nia Jax alter the equation if and when she comes back? Which I think that's... I'm pretty confident she'll be back. But uh, Yeah, yeah, that's true. What, what are we working with? Uh, your thoughts on the pay per view, Keish? Yo, how? What? Wait. What? What did you how think? How does that work? Ah, what did I think? I was not ready for that. That's what I thought. <laughs> mm-hmm. I was not ready for that. Um. <sighs> I didn't know what to think. You know, watching it was like, okay. You know, it was, I literally had mixed emotions, actually. I don't really um, know how to really assess that other than saying that much. So, um, wasn't wasn't too bad, you know. Wasn't the most exciting thing in the world, but that's pretty much where I, I was at with that. So I don't really I think that's the best way for me to explain it okay. um, yeah Cedric Alexander in which Swan defeated uh, Brian Kend- Kendrick and Jack Gallagher um, I'm happy to see Cedric Alexander really kind of be a more consistently shown in this cruiserweight division yeah he is definitely holding his own like he is and it was weird because and when I first once we first see him on 205 Live and everything and then before he got hurt like I didn't know what they were going to do with him because I was kind of afraid of him getting like pushed into the background and then like barely being seen but they're really doing a great job with him yeah um, you know they're I, I don't know if it was timing. I don't know if it was. I don't know what happened, but there was a time where I felt like he was kind of being pulled back. Oh, he was kind of just kind of like in the mix, but he wasn't being pushed. You know what I mean? And I think like this guy obviously could be a title contender. Like, what are we doing here, right? 
Like he right. has the look, almost kind of to the point of you wonder if he belongs on two hundred five live kind of look, right? Right. Because you know when you see him, he's kind of jack compared to those guys. Uh, but the athleticism is there. Uh, you know he can deliver a match. The fans dug it because from the cruiserweight classic. I mean, you got to remember, this is the guy where after his match, like Triple H had to come out and be like, yo, we got this dude. We, right, right. Don't worry, he's signed. Like, please, do not worry. Like, we, we, we're, we're, we, we wouldn't mess this up. Right. So That was um, scared for him. That was yeah. scared for him, man. The crowd was like, oh, man, please keep this dude. You know, like, they didn't know, but, I mean, he's holding his own. He's holding his own, and I have to, I give him mad props, man. He's he's kind of awesome in that ring. So, it's so, well-deserved. Uh, yeah, that's going down. But, uh, Alexa Bliss defeated Mickey James to retain her women's title, uh, as expected. I thought Mickey put up a good performance. And after the match, they gave Mickey her flowers. Like, they didn't, like, just throw it away. Like, it was just a match that happens in the, in the bubble. Like, they did, like, let Mickey speak her piece. Uh, and let you know, hey, she's going to be around for a minute. So, uh, I appreciate giving a veteran her uh, her due, even though she didn't, have, she didn't win. Right. Exactly. Uh, but... You win some, you lose some, right? Right. Uh, what Enzo Abore defeated Kalisto. Uh, oh, Lord. To get the Cruiserweight that, that title back. Just... Mm. Can we talk about Enzo for a minute? Yes, we can. Uh, which, funny enough, uh, I think we talked about this on the last show that one of our college teammates cut his hair. Prior to Raw, when it was in Indianapolis, mm-hmm. so I don't hate Enzo. He's he's good people with my people, right? Uh, right, right. But I think he's annoying. You know what's crazy? I'm glad that they, um, I'm glad they turned him heel. Yes. I am uh, glad. I actually glad they turned him heel. That has been the best thing they've done with him so far. Yeah, it they gave him a click. Right. Uh, right. And I I don't like any of those guys. Like they're doing a good job cuz I I really don't like any of them. Like I'm like, "Wow. I find all of you guys like beat upable. Like really uh you you guys annoy me. Uh, good job, cause <laughs> right, it's, it, it's hard. It, it, it's hard to get under my skin. And usually, I appreciate uh, people who are, you know, good at being heels. Right, like I appreciate Kevin Owens. I do. Uh, I appreciate his work, which is hard because I know I'm not supposed to like him, and uh, he he, but he, but I appreciate how he works. Flip side, uh, Keish. I realize. Yes. I can't stand Zab- Sami Zayn more and more every day. Oh my God! So he is Sammy. so annoying. Oh, we'll get to Sammy when. Yeah, but, but yeah, we'll, we'll roll but, it out because we're we're gonna get to SmackDown. But uh, um, yeah, we are. But Enzo, I know why Devil. Enzo. Quit. Yeah, I do. I know why Devil quit. Like if Devil's like. If this is where this is going, and I gotta lose to this dude, that you know what? Uh, before I choke him for real, uh, yeah, I'm out of here. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I understand. Mm-hmm. Even though, mm. I, I know it was hard. I understand why I never quit. Uh, Keish, major match from the show, the yeah. demon. Finn Baylor, and he showed up as the demon, defeated AJ Styles. Surprise entrance 
into the show due to Bray's absence. Right. Mm-hmm. Keish, when they okay, so imagine Friday you get home. I wouldn't even. I didn't get home. I was at work and I was like reading something, and I just came across one. Kurt Angle was wrestling, so like everybody broke into like emergency like mode, like wrestle zone. Sent somebody to the Facebook Live, like look. Let me sit down and talk to y'all. Because, it, it, I mean, this was on WWE.com when they made the announcement. Like, this wasn't like no dirt sheet coming out like, hey, Kurt Angle go wrestle. You know what I mean? Right. Like, this was this was a big deal. All right, cool. So, flip, flip it over. They say AJ Styles is going to be coming home. He is leaving. South America, because SmackDown Live people are in, was in South America. He's leaving South America, coming back to the states, and gonna wrestle uh, Finn Balor. And I'm like, we doing AJ and Finn at TLC? No build up, no nothing. Mm-hmm. No, well, right. I the state of the union. I understood it. I'm like, whoa! Like this thing has legs. Like this thing means something. And this match is gonna be crazy nuts. It lived up to the hype. They told a little story with it. They all but acknowledged the Bullet Club without saying Bullet Club. They mentioned that a hey, Finn Red was the man with the club, and when he left, AJ took it over. They just didn't mention who and what, where, why, and how. That so, right, right. Yeah, they don't own the Bullet Club. Now, Keisha, your thoughts on the match? I, I thought it was an excellent match, but... You know what? I agree. I agree. I thought it was um, very intense. Very... That's uh, what I'm looking for. It wasn't too much. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It was just the right amount of everything. So the it's the match itself was um I gave it an A plus. You know what I'm saying? It was it was pretty awesome. But I I have to really wonder like is there anything that's gonna come from this? You know what I'm saying? Like, is there anything that's gonna develop between the two or is it just a one time thing right now? So, um, other than that, um, the, here's the, thing. The, the match is great. I think it's going to have a little bit of licks because going into t- uh, Survivor Series with both of the represented opposite sides of the coin, uh, best believe that uh, this won't be the last time they see each other. Uh, I feel like they could do some more with them. Uh so it won't necessarily be the last time, but uh, I, I I I thought they put they laid a good foundation. Uh, Jason Jordan defeated Elias. Uh, which uh, shout out to Jason Jordan for winning a match. Uh, I guess you know we still are doing the Jason Jordan thing. Like they hadn't totally forgot about that. Even though we could have used him in the next match at TLC. Like, and what I mean by, like, we, I, I don't know. But anyway, so, uh, the main event, TLC. Kurt Angle in the Shield. Kurt Angle was a temporary Shield member that night. Uh, and they defeated the Miz, the Barcade, and Braun Strowman in the five hundred three handicap match. Now, how did they defeat him in the five hundred three handicap match, Keish? Uh, it was I. I thought the match was over the top, but in a good way. Would you go with that assessment, or what did you think? No, I go with that assessment. I mean, I just didn't really uh, know what to expect, to tell the truth. It um, 
it was kind of like throwing me off guard a little bit, you know, but no, I agree with you. I could go with that. Yeah, I mean, I just, I thought uh, Kurt looked good. Uh, was, I mean, they, they had some moments where he looked very like Kurt. Uh, they took the match in a lot of different ways. I don't think they hurt anybody. Uh, they moved some people around. Uh, they played up the tension between Kane and Braun even before the match. So that was always there. And so people had some accidents during the match between the two monsters. And it ended up with Braun kind of stuck in a dumpster. Which I thought, hey... The match was so over the top at that point. I thought they were going to have Broad break the dumpster. Not the dumpster. I'm sorry, but the trash truck. The, 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 tra- the trash truck. Hey. Yeah. I, did, I, I thought, first of all, I'm like, they turned it on and had him go up. But I'm like, I don't know how those things work. But uh, that's scary. But I thought they was gonna have it like he was gonna come out the top. Like I thought they had had a gimmick and he was just gonna come out the top and just be like, Rrr, and scare everybody. But he didn't. He was done. But by the end, you know, the divide and conquer had took place, and uh, Kurt Angle had his Willis Reed triumphant return after being carted off in the match earlier because Braun Strowman put him through a table. Uh, but Kurt came back. He gave us some good suplexes. Uh, the originator of the suplex city. Uh, but yeah, he, he gave us some ankle locks. It was good to see Kurt be a vintage Kurt. And uh, they won the match. Uh, hurt and beat up, but they won the match. Uh, I don't know if Kane picked up any votes in his mayoral race. But uh, that that's what happened. Like I said, I thought it was a B B plus pay per view. I thought uh, it was entertaining. I thought all the people who were there uh, did a good job based on what they had to work with, and they told a story that I don't think harmed anybody, but left everybody feeling good. And that's all you ask for at the end of a wrestling show. Is I think people walking away feeling good or if they feel bad that they want to come back and see what happens next. Right? Like they don't necessarily feel bad but they feel bad for the people and they want to see what happens next. I gotta feel like my guy's gonna get his. He's gonna he's gonna come back and get his. So we'll see how that goes. So with that, take this thing on the raw. We'll do our break. We'll do birthdays. We'll do the news, and then you know we'll we'll do some SmackDown, right? Because uh, the news. Whew. All right, but raw. So Kurt Angle opened up his raw. He's interrupted by the Miz. Uh. Kurt Angle says, hey, uh, I got a guy here who was here last night. He's here another night. Uh, AJ Styles. AJ Styles is going to join the Shield. And they're going to face the Miz of the bar. Uh, And they beat him in a six-man tag. And uh, then Kane shows up and just wrecks shop against everybody. Uh, did Kane wanted some competition uh, he defeated Finn right. Baylor now that's the only thing I got only problem I have with that is that Finn just won the night before and I don't think y'all about to set up a long term program between those two and I don't th- have him lose to Kane I think there was somebody else on the roster that could have took that loss A fair, a fair, fair notoriety could have took that loss, and like that's my only problem with the booking. Sometimes is that hey, not 
I think y'all have enough bodies where some people don't have to take those losses. And I don't think the loss hurts Finn in a way, especially because like he can always spin it like, "Wow, I went out there and I faced Cade as a normal man, and it was this." You know, it's going to take a demon to be the demon. Da 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 da. You know what I mean? And you can and you can have that match at some point later, right? Or if you if you want to use that later, I guess it's still in the arsenal. So there there there's an idea. Um, Oscar defeated Emma in a rematch. Uh, once again, they could have found somebody else for Oscar to beat up that day. Like left that like pay per view caliber match. And to just let Oscar, they they could have found a local lady for Oscar to kick in. But that happened. Uh, Jason Jordan defeated I mean, Elias via DQ because Elias had enough of this. So when did we drop Elias Sampson? When did we just go Elias? Like I think I missed a memo on that. Uh. So that happened. Uh, Brock Lesnar accepts Jinder Mahal's challenge for Survivor Series. So, when we were talking about absurd things earlier, Keish. <laughs> right. Uh, I like Paul's promo. One thing I can appreciate about Paul Heyman is that Paul <laughs> is on the pulse of the people. And Paul knew that he could come out here and talk us to heaven on this match, right? Paul Paul does some good Baptist preaching sometimes. And what I mean by that is this. You ever been to a trifling Negro funeral? And that pastor preaches that trifling negro to heaven I mean maybe not Keish you're, you're a little young mm-hmm. I'm just saying I'd have been and sat and listened to somebody talk about Willie Joe and that pastor preached Willie Joe straight to heaven right now mind you at Willie Joe funeral they had to separate his wife and his two side pieces so they didn't fight but that pastor still preached Willie Joe to heaven mm-hmm. Paul Heyman has done that with some very very peculiar matches he has came in and spit his fire on a promo and you said damn I want to see that he did not do that with this match. No, no, not even a little bit. He is <clears throat> as confused as the rest of us. Like, hold on, this guy who had to cheat to beat Shinsei Nakamura, who, mind you, I I say this with all due respect, the way they book in Nakamura, that's, you know, I can see how Paul used as an example, but. Should say Nakamura somebody Brock Lesnar would have trouble with. How do I know? There is a match between the two from New Japan Pro Wrestling. You can check out on the YouTube. Okay. But I digress. Uh this is a guy who uh cheated Randy Orton. This is a guy who uh probably can't be AJ Styles straight up. Um uh, what does he think he's doing? Uh, this is one of those matches, Keish. I know the Singh brothers really want to make it in the WWE, right? I think they really want to make it. And I think they're ready for the big time, right? But you ain't got to die to make it, man. Because think about it. You you recognize their role for gender, right? They are like the J and J security for him. 
they are going to be little butt machines that will absorb blows to help out the champ. That's what they do in this capacity, right? Um, you know Brock don't really care how hard he throws little people. Like, Brock don't always look out for your neck on them suplexes. That's all I'm saying. And that force comes kind of hard when he can throw you and you only weigh like a buck 20. So, I, I'm a little worried for the Sig Brothers. Uh, Jinder, uh, Jinder has physically prepared himself for this match. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, I'm not insinuating that he has taken any kind of performance that has drugs. I'm just saying he's physically prepared. Take that how you want to. Keish. Do, yes. Would you be excited to see that as a main event of Survivor Series? I, uh, I don't know, man. No. <laughs> like that's pretty much uh yeah. I don't think I'll be too excited about that. I even you know, a little bit. You know. Yeah, I mean I I, I don't know. So, nah, no, I know I wouldn't. Like I there's no question. Like yeah. so um yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Alicia Fox defeated Bailey and Sasha Banks to be the Raw Women's Team Captain. Uh, I didn't see that coming. Out of all the things, like when they set up the match, I was like, oh, okay, well, I mean, Bailey and Sasha would be a nice team captain. Like I said, didn't see uh, see that working his way out. Uh, so Shane McMahon was at uh, Raw that night and wanted to say hey to everybody and I'm like okay cool Sh- Shane here uh, we setting up for Survivor Series uh, then Key Smackdown invaded Raw and beat up everybody that they could find. Now, mind you, they did not beat up certain people. Certain people were not available to be beaten up. Uh, Brock Lesnar didn't get beat up. Which, good job. Good job, Brock. Uh, Braun Strowman wasn't there because he's recovered from injuries. Uh, K did not get beat up, so that's a good 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 idea. Um, but everybody else got got got, got trounced. Uh, Kish, did you believe in the SmackDown invasion? Um. I'm Team Blue, so yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I was I was with it. Yeah. I I, I, mean, I mean I'm not even gonna fight. I was all the way with it. Yeah, uh even the ladies uh beat up the ladies. So I was like, All right, well that that that's different. But yeah, uh, they 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 went they went through the locker room. Now I thought it was good in a sense of this. You had to make a story that makes all of this not believable, but uh, implausible that SmackDown has an advantage or that SmackDown can intimidate Raw. Right? Because just based on the lineups, and just off the top of my head, Keish, if I said this is going to be a fight, I don't believe SmackDown has a chance. And part of it is because they got a little 
they got a little roster over there because the the guys that they got over there are mostly guys to fit the style that they do, right? Uh, Baron Corbin is a bigger guy, right? But if I put Baron Corbin against Cade, who you got? Uh, what happens if Braun Strowman gets loose over there, right? Now, mind you, Rowan and Harper aren't back yet. Now, but when they get back in the mix over at SmackDown, that that changes some dynamics. But still, Braun Strowman lets loose. What what happens over there? Sheamus has Cesaro. You know what I mean? Gallows and Anderson. Um. Hell, Roman Reigns when he's healthy. Like, a lot of heavy hitters. Uh, I just don't know. Like, I'm just, I'm looking at the idea of SmackDown versus Raw, and I'm like, all right, man, I can see how Raw would run through this. Brock. But, uh, that being said, uh, SmackDown fired first shots and uh, they're ready uh, as I shared with you a video apparently New Day had a lot of fun beating up people and then jumped to the right and said maybe I don't like Raw which I thought was funny but uh, yeah so there we are and we are coming up on the break we will be back after these messages and uh, we will uh, talk more wrestling. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we got a taste of it a little earlier on here on Saturday night's main event when the madness met the mania. I am talking about macho madness and Hulkamania, two mega powers beating here tonight. Hulk Hogan, what is happening? Well, you know me, Gene, we really don't know what we're dealing with here, man. And I'm just kind of a little worried about walking up here. It's all right. Because we just might blow the whole planet up, you know. Everybody knows that Hulkamania is the strongest force in this universe. But when I hit that ring and I saw what the madness was all about, I realized there was a whole other universe out there, a whole other frontier, and the power of the madness and the mania just blew my 24 inch guns out there. You mean to tell me there is another solar system, Macho Man? Unbelievable. I'm still in a state of shock right now. Long period of time. Yeah, reckless abandon is what it used to be. Yeah. Yeah, he endorsed Macho Man this and he gave me direction. Yeah, direction now. The mega, yeah, the mega, yeah, the mega power. Yeah, mega power. Yeah. I feel the power now. I feel the power right there. Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. The head over the head, Macho Man. Oh, oh man, I'm all right. It's, it's never been better. Yeah, don't you worry about the head over the head, man. I'm just worried about where we're going from here. Is it this stratosphere, man? Is it the ionosphere with the madness and the mania as one guiding force? We could go ahead and take the whole. I cannot believe this. No, 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 Event, Ooh, Omega man, Powers, the Madness, Macho Man the Randy power, Savvy, yeah. and the heavyweight champion, and Hulkamania. I'm pretty sure in that Mega Powers promo that somebody was on cocaine. Oh my god, he said cocaine. Yeah, I'm, like, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure one or both of those guys were on cocaine. Uh... That's either here nor there. Uh, Keish, it is October yes. 26th. Yes, it is. That means yesterday was October 25th. And if right. it's October 25th, that means yesterday, two cold Scorpio celebrated a birthday. Two cold mm. Mm, 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 Scorpio. Oh, sorry. I can go to That one. man had so many theme songs and names and such. Flash Funk. Just Scorpio. Uh yeah, okay. Anyway, uh Perry yeah, I Sa- couldn't keep up. I Perry keep Saddle up. celebrated a birthday. Uh, Rosa Menendez celebrated a birthday yesterday. Mm. 
Now, uh, today is October 26th. That means Taka Michinoku. Celebrate the birthday. Taka turned 44 today. Uh, uh. Uh, CL Punk celebrates her birthday today, Keish. CL Punk turned 39 today. Uh, Phil Brooks himself. <laughs> MMA uh, fighter, uh, uh. CM Punk. Right. Former wrestling superstar, CM Punk. Yeah. Comic book writer, CM Punk. Yeah, it goes down like that. Uh, I wonder how that story ends. Right? Like. Right. Is the story of wrestling in like 10 years will we be able to explain to people how big of a deal like the whole CM Punk thing was you know we probably will and it's going to be a very interesting story but at the same time it's going to be a really fucked up story so I mean it's not I, I yeah mean, no I mean I honestly I don't think it's fucked up I think it like, there are stories that ended a whole lot worse. Yeah, that's true. That so, is true. I feel like it's just a, a like we don't we don't have a point of reference for it. But like, it's just like I don't know. In ten years, will I be able to explain to people like what the yes movement was and what Daniel Bryant what that meant to? But maybe so because maybe the nostalgia will kick in. And those people would view it how people view the Attitude Era and be like, wow, no, you don't understand. Right. For, for this right. moment in time, for this blip, like 2011 through 2014 wrestling, um, I think the appreciation for what was there will be so huge maybe in the future. See, the thing is, Daniel will be in the family. What, what I mean by that with the, with the WWE. He'll probably be in there in some capacity. So... I think his story lives on and you'll look people will look at him and wonder like what was the big deal about him and then they'll go back and explain and they'll run the video because it'll be on WWE Network da 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 right like I think he's in that Gorilla Basul space where like people my age probably were like what's the big deal with Gorilla right why is he on everything right Uh and then we talked to the old heads they were like no, no, like this dude was the star of this shit back in the day. Like before the whole get it all that, this dude was like the mayor. And it's like, oh, okay, right. So I think that'd be there. But the thing is, too, like people have access to video because everything's digital. So it'll be archived a lot better and people will be able to come to it and see it and be like, oh, wow, yeah, like that was the thing. So, all right. um, there's an article in Sports Illustrated I haven't read yet. It's about pro wrestling tees, and it has to do with CM Punk. And basically, uh, they'll blow it up and become this huge, huge place overnight, having to do with uh, making T-shirts for CM Punk and going from there. But, uh, yeah, pro wrestling tees, who've been around a while, uh, mm. has a lot of wonderful merch, a lot of indie stuff. It's a place where you can get Bullet Club merchandise before it was like available everywhere else but now shit uh, hot topic that got into this wrestling gear stuff and you know you can get all kinds of stuff there now mm-hmm. but uh yeah um, a lot of that's cal- the callous of punk but Keish I guess now uh time to really uh Get get to rock and rolling, of course. And talk about some news. So, uh, oh god, the news. Jeff Jarrett and GFW are officially split from uh, Impact Wrestling and Anthem. It's getting messy. It's got messy these streets. Uh, Jeff said all kinds of loose stuff, but I have to update because I was really ready to rail on it, but. I realize Jeff is going through a tough personal time. 
And uh, apparently he is going into rehab. That is the word on the streets. Uh, WWE sponsored rehab. Mm-hmm. Because uh, people say a lot of mm-hmm. crappy things about Vince. Vince paid for a lot of folks rehab. Uh, but because of that, of course, Jeff Jarrett would not be at WrestleCade this weekend in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, which, Keish. Yeah. I not know about WrestleCade. Apparently, like, this show is going to be bananas. I mean, it's going to be crazy. Uh, Karma's going to be there. Like, it's, it's going to be a bunch of people. Like it is going down. Yeah, I don't know if this is just how it's gonna be right now, but uh, this is gonna be. Oh, you just gotta watch it unfold. Gotta watch it unfold, I guess, because it means <laughs> how else are you gonna find out the outcome of it all? Like it's just gonna be stupid. This is gonna be. Oh man. Mm-mm. Yeah. So guys, but, yeah. Uh, mm. Jeff got a lot going on, man. I hope he I hope he gets better. Uh yeah, hopefully you know, just 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 for just for you know, as a person, man, like I I hate to see anybody go into uh dealing with those kind of issues. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, he's going to the company sponsor we have. Uh, Cause I mean, the stuff they said about him at the indie promotion and stuff like that—that that, that's not cool either. One thing, man, I think for these guys, especially of a certain veteran status, they have to watch the indie promotions that they work for. Cause those people don't really care about the the wrestler and what I mean by that they they worry about getting their money and getting money back from you know whatever they put out or whatever and sometimes they don't uh, I don't know Mm-hmm. It it just it just comes out wrong, and, and they put people out yeah. there, and then they embarrass the guy who might be going through something. And I've seen it happen with like Scott Hall and other stuff. You know what I mean? Ah, I. I just I just thought it wasn't cool. Uh, you were right about that. Yeah. So that happened. Um. So we just uh never be a goal for the WWE. Uh, Nia Jax is on hiatus, but she has been uh, active on the social media. Apparently, she's going to be on this season of Total Divas. That's what she tells everybody? I mean, because she's been putting herself on some Total Divas posters and stuff. But uh, a lot of it had to do with certain things she wasn't happy she wasn't happy with her story last she wasn't happy with the pay uh, I think they one thing I think they did was they ducked and avoided trying to put the title on her and I never understood that hmm. but uh-uh. uh Keish do, do yeah. we have a problem at WWE cause I've, I've heard the story that a lot of people have been reaching out to Cody Rhodes Try to figure out how he got his release, and could they do something similar? And asking him for advice, since I mean he is probably the most successful person who's left uh, and made this thing work of with life away from the WWE and made a hell of a lot of money. Uh, which, if that's the case, I'll explain to you why Cody has very unique circumstances compared to a lot of people who would think this. But uh, do you think there's a bigger problem brewing as they've been talking about on these internet streets? Because here's what I would say. 
the WWE is the biggest wrestling company in the world right now. The second biggest is New Japan. Period. Um, those are the two places you can make a certain amount of money. Now, Ring of Honor, you can make a lot of money, but they've got a lot invested probably towards the top tier of their roster. Um, and then, now, the thing is, too, they will allow you to work other places to get your money up, but that's a lot of work, right? Plus, then, you got to see our name value. What advantage Cody Rhodes had over a lot of people was name value, Right? One, that's how he got his release. Just got to remember, they understood he was going through a tough time. I think they all they always expect that he will come back, and they let him do his thing, and uh, they loved his dad, and I think a lot of that factors in. His brother still works there. Da da da. Cody has something to sell and market. And Cody's a genius in managing his own character. I don't know if I can say that for any... I don't know who in particular is thinking about leaving. But most of them can't even leave with their name. You know what I'm saying? See, Cody Rhodes is Cody Rhodes because that's who he is. But let's say you Sheamus. You can't be Sheamus on the Indies. You'd be the artist formerly known as Sheamus. You might not even be able to be Cliff Shaber so say. Like you do. Uh. But uh, we'll see. Uh, Nia Jax. Hey, man. She can model. She has all kinds of things. And uh, when your cousin is Dwayne the Rock Johnson, you can be uh, hooked up in other ways. So, hey. You could end up in a movie or something like that, and you know, life goes on. I don't know if everybody else has the uh, has that clout. Um, with that being said, Paige might be headed back sooner than later, like very soon. Apparently, uh, they are ready to get her back in the mix. So this will let you know too. Hey man, you can always come home. If you got some name value recognition, you can always come home. WWE does not really, uh, you know, they, they they take things serious, uh, but they uh, they could they, they make sure they can go home. Because uh, you have to wonder if she uh, if she could have came back. But she uh, she's back. Yeah. So uh, um, that's going down. Despite well, I, the fact that they can't stand her boyfriend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Chris Jericho and Kitty Omega are having a lot of back and forth on the Twitters, which it's fun. Um, glad to see uh, wrestlers having fun out there on the on the streets to the Twitters. Uh, don't expect much from it. Because, uh, hey, Kenny Omega don't wrestle in WWE. Uh huh. And I don't know if Jer- Jericho will do a one tab or one off in New Japan, which the WWE, I would love for them to be smart enough to do something like that. But, uh, you know, they try to let their guys do something like that. But they, they should. They should have a working relationship. Let them do something with New Japan. And boom. So I, Jericho never worked in Japan. I think he worked at Re- Pro Wrestling Noah when he was in Japan, but I don't think he never worked in New Japan. So it'd be kind of interesting. But, uh, 
Yeah, I think they, they can let Jericho do a one off and make it make it interesting to have fun. Uh, that's all I would do for the news. It's not else a lot going on. Uh, we talked about Jeff Jarrett. Uh, we talked about Nia Jax. We talked about uh, my bad Neville bouncing up out the crib. Uh, as far as us at ring time, uh, we are going to commit to doing more New Japan stuff and doing more Ring of Honor stuff. Uh, Bully Ray is doing some incredible work as he's doing his farewell tour. At least that's what we think is going on in Ring of Honor. Um, that place over there, though, man, is cracking. Um, I've been able to watch a lot of their most recent shows. And the work Cody Rhodes is doing over there is just phenomenal. Um, and that Ring of Honor is probably one of the better ideas I've seen in wrestling. Um, so... I, I'm not gonna rehash a lot of news that's probably went on since we've been gone. Just like the WWE being petty about the two sweet that the Bullet Club Bullet Club been doing. Uh oh, a shout to the Bullet Club for inviting Vince McMahon to a Ring of Honor show. Always good to see. Uh but yeah. So uh we'll go over SmackDown just kinda briefly. Uh Sami Zayn came face to face with Shane McMahon after of course See, we weren't here for Hell in a Cell. So, can we talk about uh, Catch Up, Kevin Owens, Russell Shane McMahon, there was a cell match, Shane was going for the Shane elbow, Sami Zayn pushed KO out the way. Uh, Sami Zayn's a heel now. So now he gets to use his annoying too for good, because he's a heel. Uh, one thing I'll say about that whole fiasco over there, Good job by SmackDown and WWE for not rehashing. Okay, since they invaded Raw Monday, a lot of people probably thought naturally Raw was going to invade SmackDown. And they didn't. And I think that was great. Because that would have been, like, way too obvious. So good job by... WWE but not just going and trying to do that tire trope and Smackdown would have been ready or should have been ready so hopefully what we do is Raw will invade Smackdown closer to Survivor Series and drum up the idea but Smackdown moved on with the storylines and still kind of set themselves up for Survivor Series with Randy Orton taking on uh, Sami Zayn uh, I think a good match from the show was Chad Gable and Shelton Benjamin uh, defeating New Day. Uh, New Day with the Kofi Xavier lineup, which is, the, I guess, the speed lineup for the New Day. Uh, but they look ready. They look ready for the Usos. Uh, so that challenge will be there. Uh, like I said, I, I committed SmackDown for moving on with their stories and just trying to get their self in order and ready for... Uh, Survivor Series where I'm having to try to fend off an invasion. Right. Uh, and like I said, I, I thought uh, Sammy uh, I think I might I might be able to work with Sammy as a heel. And maybe he'll win a little more. And he, like I said, it was just annoying. I don't want to see a Sammy Zay Shane McMahon match though. And um, while I'm on Shane McMahon, I appreciate everything he has done. Shane gives his all. He does the things, a lot of things I wouldn't do. Because if my dad was the boss, uh, I wish one of y'all would hit me with a chair. <laughs> tell you like this. Yo ass is going to be swinging chairs over in TV. Oh, let's... That's what's going to happen. Keith, you can, Keith, you can take that chair shot. Man, let me tell you something. It's cool. I damn sure ain't jumping off no cage and missing. Yeah, you right about that. Who the, hell said I, who the hell said I'm missing? You going to take this elbow. Fuck that. I, I'm Somebody. not getting up there to do it in the first place. Like, we good on that. 
I I pay too uh, much money. I'm gonna do what? No. So, no. Yeah. I, I I I would scoff at the suggestion, but still. Right. You know, and damn if I I I pay y'all enough to break my fall, kiss my ass. How much money do you make, Kevin Owens? You gonna make forty five thousand dollars a night? You you about to take this elbow? Yeah, no. <laughs> and, but and it ain't gonna be for twenty feet, cause uh, ain't no way in hell. Um, uh, and Keish, I don't think this is the best use of a forty eight year old body. Pretty sure it's not. And I'm just saying, uh-uh. as somebody who might be ten years younger, hey, I ain't doing that shit. No. No, that just that looks horrible. I'm good. I ain't doing that. I'm, I'm broke. Right, because no. So, like, so imagine if I'm rich, I really ain't doing that. That's stupid. Like, I, like I said, I'm broke and I'm not doing nothing like that. You could tell me today, like, hey man, look, here's a hundred grand. Go, go make that jump. As my father would say. Fuck you. And if you got some friends, fuck them too. I am not doing this. Not doing it. So, all I'm saying is to say this. I love Shane. And some of the daredevil stuff he's done in the past has been amazing. Right? But we don't need to see him keep doing daredevil stuff. No, that's to impress not, us, that's, like we are beyond that, and I think he can still have really good matches without him scaring us that he's gonna kill himself. Yeah, see, all that is unnecessary. That's I all. feel like at times he's trying to be like a man. He's trying to do like a mankind thing, where he's just like completely doing doing like the most. In order to impress the crowd or to get good bounty points or something, I don't know what the motivation behind it is, but it's really unnecessary. Like you don't really have to do all of that, you know. Like, because all it's doing is, uh, all it's doing is scaring everybody and shortening the time that we do have. Right. Well, so I don't really understand it myself. I don't. So. That's 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 what I want to get off from that. It's just that, like, hey man, you 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 ain't got you ain't got to do that. Not not for our sake. Mm-hmm. No. That's all. But uh, with that being said, I think we're gonna wrap this up. All right. Uh, you uh, you have it, but uh, with that being said, we'll be back next week. We will talk about some more wrestling. Uh, be on the lookout for some articles because RigtimePoWrestling dot com will have to be freshened up, and we will work right. on some things. And uh, like I said, with that, we are out. Peace. Bye.